Hello, in this lecture I'll show you how to apply or rather establish a spinning effect on a object, okay? Uh, this could be applied on an image, uh, on any kind of an object, uh, so like a wheel on a, or a cog, uh, many different applications for it, and it's not very straightforward, so I have already prepared it. I have prepared the spinning effect and I can actually launch this. You see it's spinning. This green uh, little circle is spinning, you see. So now let's take a look at uh, how it's done. Okay, so this is just a, a circle, an ellipse shape. That would be this one right here. Okay, so I added that. I made it completely round. Okay, and um, I added a gradient background and that's it really. Okay, so it's right here and uh, behind it we have this uh, rectangle. This rectangle is basically the white background, okay? So we have the rectangle and we have the shape. The shape is what is interesting. So if I double click it, I will see all the properties for that shape. And as you can already see, I have rotate, 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 rotate. Okay, I have six of them. Now, to create a rotation, one rotation, you need to right click either inside here in the ellipse, okay, right here we have the ellipse, or on the ellipse right here, okay, we can do it right here. You right click, then you go to video effects, then you go to transforms, and then you go to rotate. Okay, now mind you, this rotation will only happen once. Okay, so it will only happen once. And uh, if I select, say, the first one, for example, I go to the properties of it right here. And as you can see, we have this uh, linear parameter, but it's not line. Remember, the line would be something that happens instantly. So if I used a line in this selection and I did 360, it would just rotate instantly. It would just show basically a different position, okay? It wouldn't be very exciting. Now with this uh, kind of a rising line, what happens is uh, uh, we start at a zero angle and we get to 360, okay? 360. Now, the time that it takes is the duration of the object. So it will get to ze from zero to 360, 360 degrees in about one second. Or you can simply extend uh, one of these uh, objects, okay? And that will determine the speed of the rotation. So one of them rotates once, okay? It rotates once, one of them. Then I add uh, in the sequence a second one, which is actually the same properties, okay? 0 to 60, like that. And then this one will rotate again. So this one rotates a full circle and then it gets to this one. This one again rotates a full circle and gets to the third one. And then to the fourth one, to the fifth one, to the sixth one. So the longer we take to rotate, the slower the whole thing will be. The quicker they rotate or uh, the shorter this object is, the quicker they will rotate, okay? Now, again, if I launch that, again, you see, it's spinning. It's spinning, it's spinning, it's spinning, it's spinning. Now, if I were to, say, change the, uh, the speed a little, like that, do it like that, right? Make a very quick uh, kind of rotation. We will barely be able to see it, but uh, it should be good enough. Just to show you a quick little example. So let's, uh, you see how quickly it spun. Let's launch that again from start. See? It stops, and now we get a slower one. It's been slowly. So you see, you can change the speeds, and uh, again, one simple 
object, uh, one simple effect object rather, only does so much. If you want to, some, to have something really interesting and exciting, you need to use several objects, perhaps even different types of objects, uh, uh, to really create that uh, neat effect that you require. So this is how you do rotations, and with that we will conclude this lecture.